y'all doing? Well, I'm going to see if I'm... I'm going to make an attempt to make a series of videos involving paleo, uh, paleontology articles like I've been doing you know, just like right last video I did. Uh, this time, it will probably... Um, it does, what will probably motivate, motivate me to do it, sorry, is that um, I do volunteer work at the Sam Noble Museum of Oklahoma Natural History and work in the um, vertebrate, um, uh, vertebrate fossil cleaning lab. And right now, uh, during the semester, some of the graduate students invite many of the, um, the volunteers and the staff, and I think even the students, if they can, um, every couple of weeks they'll go over a one or two papers that are not necessarily that long, or if it's a little bit lengthy one, they'll stick to one. They'll try and keep to a theme, but not always, and we begin discussion about this one. So, and it doesn't have to be strictly vertebrate paleontology either. So, um, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to talk about what we discussed last, um, last our, our first meeting, uh, which didn't run perfectly because there was miscommunication on when the time was. They set it up for 12 o'clock, but that message didn't get to everyone else because they, those who've been there before, thought it was 1 o'clock. <clears throat> but, you know, that's, uh, I'm digressing here. So, what we talked about here was under the themes of, um, of uh, development of, um, of young. And we'll, we'll talk about the first one. This one is from, um, Thomas A. Higgin and all, um, it is called Piratize in Situ Trial by Eggs for the Order Vision of New York, Lorraine Group, Implications for Trilobite Reproductive Biology. You all know about trilobites. They're the little arthropod, of all the, um, invertebrates that are out there. They're probably the most famous ones next to ammonites, which are mollusks. Um, but, you know, we collect them. They're easy to, you know, you can buy them easily. Um, you can find them in mass numbers. There's so much research on these guys. We know just about everything. And here, um, <clears throat> but we don't know much about eggs. We don't know much about um, the, the young of these. We find small ones. We, you know, we find, we find so many of them. We can, you know, you take one species and do enough measurements of it and you do a graph. You can see how much, um, the molting, um, um, ecdysis, which is molting. You can see how big they get in the graph, you know, after a certain, a young ones, uh, a certain group or this size, but then they get bigger and so forth um, after they shed their outer shells. But even then, I mean, so much is done on research from the ecology, um, you know, oh, growth cycles, you know, how numerous there are, just about everything, you know, let's see. Uh, trilobites are one of the most recognizable and fascinating Paleozoic fossils, despite the fact that we know much uh, about their ontogeny, ecology, and evolution. Almost nothing is known about how they reproduce. Well, okay, yeah, sure. So soft tissues don't preserve well. Except here's this paper that says that they might have found eggs. Eggs, you know, now it's never, you know, this one's pretty good in making sure that it's not going to state 100% fact that these are, you know, the, you know, that these are eggs and nothing else. There's always room for skepticism. <laughs> but he says, based on the lines of evidence from two specimens, um, and you can see in the slideshow, and if you can, I'm going to link them down below. So go over there and look for yourself. They're not that long, and the pictures are fascinating. Well, uh, one of the specimens is, you know, first of all, what's neat is that it's upside down. So you get to see the inside. It even has legs. You don't see much um, trilobite legs. You always see them from the top. But what's interesting about it is that the, you know, the little structures that look like eggs are in the head. You may think that's kind of weird, but this actually follows very closely to horseshoe crabs. So they keep the um, eggs in, you know, you know, you know, in the actual, you know, the head part. And they may figure like some horseshoe crabs, they kind of, you know, come all together, release the sperm and eggs and mix them together. You know, that way you get a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of young at very low energy costs. Mol some mollusks could do that too particularly bivalves. But some of the, but the scanning here is neat. You can take a look at many of the illustrations. You see one of them with, um, during the scan, it's, um, one side looks kind of broken off and you see these little um, globules. And those are what most likely would be the eggs. <clears throat> um, and it, it, it's called a pyrotize. In other words, it's, um, it, the mineral, it, the mineral replacement is pyrite. But yeah, it's about, um, it's just very, very fascinating. Um, 
Now that's, you know, it's just the fact that we found this after all this time, you know, it's just not only plain luck, but even then, if you saw this in a news article like Yahoo News and all that, this is, you know, it'd be like, aha, we finally found Trilobite by Trilobite by eggs. It's 100% confirmed that they found it. When you read the paper itself, it says these are very much like trial by eggs, but it, someone else could look at it and, you know, there's still room for doubt, um, which is what peer review does. So always pay attention. So, but the next one, and again, going with the thought about embryo growth, this one, a little bit hard to follow at first, from Gregory M. Erickson et al. Um, let's see, dinosaur incubation periods directly determined by growth line counts in embryonic teeth show reptilian grade development. Now, let's see. <clears throat> let's see if I can find a good spot about this. Let me read the abstract here. Um, birds stand out from other egg-laying am um, amniotes by pr um, producing relatively small number of large eggs with very short incubation periods, um, average 11 to 85 days. This aspect promotes high survival ship by limiting exposure to predation and environmental um, perturbation, allows for larger, more fit young, and facilitates rapid um, attainment of adult size. Birds are living dinosaurs. Their rapid development have been considered to reflect the primitive dinosaur condition. Here, non-avian dinosaur incubation periods in both small and large ornithischian taxa are empirically determined through growth line counts in embryonic teeth. Our results show unexpectedly slow incubation, 2.5 to 5.8 um, months, <coughs> you know, like those of, of outgroup reptiles. Developmental and physiological constraints would have rendered both um, formations and incubation hurriedly slow in other dinosaur lineages and basal birds. The capacity to determine incubation periods in extinct egg-laying amniotes has implications for dinosaur and embryology, life history strategies, and survivorship across the Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction event. And there's a little blue box here about the significance. Little is known regarding non-avian dinosaur embryology. Embryological period relates to myriad aspects of development, life history, and evolution. In, reptilian, in, reptil, in reptiles, incubation is slow, whereas in birds, it's remarkably rapid. Because birds are living dinosaurs, you know, rapid incubation has been, you know, okay, this almost seems to kind of repeat, you know, repeat it itself. <coughs> Sorry about that. But again, I'll link it down below. Look for yourself. I mean, there's only a few pages. What they've done, there's a certain method. Um... And one of the graduate students who presented this loved this because this is related to what he does. It's a method, you know, that is you it's used to determine growth by um, subtract, you know, counting the dentine layers of the of the old of the oldest tooth that's ejected out, and then comparing that to the youngest tooth that's coming in, and by a certain. Um, by simple mathematics, in fact, if you look on the slideshow, that little chart of the two teeth, it actually gives step by step so, you know, you can understand where they're going by. <clears throat> you can use that to um, relate, uh, you know, how long the incubation period of these animals are. They did this on two species, Protoceratops and Hypacrosaurus. If I recall, um, where is it? <clears throat> Results. Give you the exact species of this. I should have looked at this before I started this video here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, here we go. Protoceratops andrusi, you know, famous from Mongolia. And there is um, Hypacrosaurus um, simingeri. I must maybe be mispronouncing that. Okay, so the end result was. Okay, so the hypothesis was, due to the fact that birds are directly descended um, from non-avian dinosaurs, of course, you would find a sort of um, rapid growth in um, <coughs> probably similar to these. But it actually, it was slower. And, you know, there's that chart where that shows all the little um, colored lines. Which, according, to, according to the people in the meeting there, it was um, not very, it's not very... Um, a very good looking chart. Only crocodiles seem to have gone through, crocodilians seem to go through a negative impact upon um, this chart. And the chart measures egg mass and incubation time in days. And so 
<clears throat> all the dinosaurs that they, you know, looks like they measured are kind of built lower in an upward slope as comparison to say, uh, let's see, L-I-S-E, um, yeah, some, some of the other, like lizards, um, same, uh, I can't, I can't read some of the others, this is a small little deal on this page right here, but again, look at the chart yourself, so it kind of went the opposite, it was, it was a slower amount of time, which, and they only did it for these two species, and, you know, which are ornithischians. Now, if there's a way to do this and say theropods, that may be closer to a rapid one, especially if they find, maybe check Oviraptor. We found Oviraptor eggs. So if they can look at some of the, if there's embryos that shows that tooth growth, which Oviraptors don't really have much of. I know some species have at least one, so there may be something. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, that is an interesting uh, a way of doing it. But another thing, even you know, another. Um, a Saurischian is sauropods. You got in South America, the Argentinosaurus, we found large amounts of uh, eggs and embryos in that. That's a way we could test it and, you know, see it further. It may have been that in these dinosaurs they didn't need that, you know, short incubation time, but they were well protected. So, yeah, the first meeting didn't start off perfectly because not everyone got in on time. Only me and, you know, the, the graduates at the course and me and one of the volunteers, and then later in the hour, it was, um, you know, everyone else started showing up because of miscommunication. But we did talk about other things. Um, for instance, we got into discussion about eBay. If you go trying to buy fossils out of eBay, boy, you are getting scammed. Because um, even if they got them legally, they try to advertise things that are just, uh, you know, they try to give for thousands of dollars for insignificant stuff. You know, <clears throat> some of it is like one guy just has a little small rounded piece of limestone that he claims has a paw print in it. And the paw print has like the palm and three digits. Kind of missing one. And it's just a piece of limestone with just three holes. And is, you know, in his, mind, in his mind thinks, oh, that's a footprint. And really isn't. There are some people selling um, fossil pieces from China, like Satakasaurus, and here's the thing, if that's a legitimate fossil and not a replica, that's an illegal buy. You can't buy, you know, it's illegal to buy fossils from China. They, you know, China's fossils have to stay in China. So yeah, discussion went over there, and there was also discussion about trying to find decent dinosaur programming, and I mentioned The Living Past, who was, you know, is an excellent YouTube channel, check it out. And one of the graduate students, you know, he says he'd probably check that out because he has a small um, summer course where he teaches paleontology, and he's tired of showing. I mean, sometimes when he shows videos, and he's trying to find other things uh, for them to watch other than walking with dinosaurs. Nothing wrong with it, but there's got to be other things about it. And, but at the same time, you don't want to show him documentaries that are just overly dramatized and um, <clears throat> trying to show dinosaurs as you know, more exciting than what they actually are, just to get people's minds centered on this. But that's kind of aggressing for what this meeting is. So there you are, these two papers here, they're not very long, I'll link them down below. So about trial about eggs and embryo growth, I'm using this method, which was found almost 20 years ago. Just now they're applying it to embryos. So there you go. Um, for all you paleophiles out there, check them out because, again, always good to check the actual literature, not um, pass down stories from news reports or just by chat. Always good to look at the articles itself and see for yourself. And these aren't that long, so thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.